Hi, welcome back to Physics Teacher. This was a question on a Sir Isaac Newton contest, a high school physics contest offered by Waterloo University. And it asks what the mass of this ring would need to be for the tension in this rope to go to zero at some point as these two beads are sliding down the ring. Give it a try, and when you're ready to see the solution, resume and I'll show you. All right, so we're going to start by looking at one of these beads, and I'm going to draw a free body diagram here. Look at a quarter of a circle. So here's the radius of this circle, and we're going to have the bead slide down this circle like this. That's a great circle there. All right, so at some point the bead is going to be, let's say, here. I'm not sure exactly where that is, but let's just say it's traveled some angle theta down this ring. Okay, so what forces are acting on it? There's going to be a normal force perpendicular to the surface of the ring. And of course, there's going to be a force of gravity downwards. Let's call this m, little m, g. And we can split gravity into components, like so, which are at 90 degrees. And this right here will be our angle theta, which is the same as this angle theta here. So then we can write our components of gravity as mg sine theta over here and mg cos theta over here. All right, so we're going to analyze this in two ways. First, we're going to analyze it using conservation of energy. So I'm going to compare the energy that the bead had at the top here with the energy it has at some point later. So conservation of energy, we have E equals E prime. So at the top, let's say right here, we have our height of zero. At the top, then, it'll have a height of R and has gravitational potential M energy, MGH, where H is R. Over here, it will also have gravitational potential energy. But what we're going to do is we're going to have to write that as MGR cos theta, because its height now is right there. That's its new height, h prime. But it's also going to be moving now, so it's going to also have kinetic energy, one half mv prime squared. Okay, so rearranging this a little bit, here we have a term with mgr here and here, so I'm going to bring them together. And I'm going to write mgr, and we're going to factor them out as 1 minus cos theta, and that's going to equal 1 half mv squared. And then I'm going to rearrange to solve for v squared over r. And the reason why I want to rearrange that to solve for v squared over r, because v squared over r is centripetal acceleration. And that's going to be something we're going to need. So if I rearrange to solve for v squared over r, we get 2g times 1 minus cos theta. The next way I'm going to analyze this diagram is using Newton's second law. But I'm going to use it for centripetal acceleration, which says the sum of all forces contributing to centripetal force equals mass times centripetal acceleration. So what forces are either directed towards or away from the center of this circle here? Well, it's going to be the normal force that's directed away, and we have a component of gravity directed towards. So we have mg cos theta minus fn. And that is going to equal mass times centripetal acceleration, where centripetal acceleration is v squared over r, or what we just solved for here, 2g times 1 minus the cos of theta. All right, so let's clean this up a bit, and we're going to solve for the normal force. So let's solve if I just rearrange this equation to solve for the normal force, notice here we have 2mg. So what we're going to do is I'm going to expand that. So we have mg cos theta from here. And then we have minus 2mg plus 
to mg cos theta. All right, so mg cos theta and 2 mg cos theta is just going to give us 3 mg cos theta minus 2 mg. Or we can simply factor out in mg to say the normal force is mg times 3 cos theta minus 2. So I'll just write this up here as we move on to the next stage of being able to solve this problem. I'm going to have to erase some stuff to give myself some room. But there's one thing I want you to notice. Notice that if cos theta were to equal two thirds, the normal force would go to zero. And if the normal force goes to zero at some point, let's just draw this here, at some point past that point where the normal force goes to zero, what's happening now is the ring is going to be pulling in on the bead and therefore the bead will pull out on the ring. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a free body diagram here of the ring at this point where we have some normal force caused by the bead pulling outwards on the ring. All right, so let's analyze the free body diagram of this ring. So we looked at the normal force, which actually acts on the bead to be mg times 3 cos theta minus 2. But now I want to see that equal and opposite force that the bead puts on the ring. So the normal force before was towards the center of the circle on the bead, like so. The length of those vectors should be fairly similar, but that's all right. Um, so the normal force that is then acting on the ring will be the same magnitude but opposite direction. So I'm going to throw that negative in there because of Newton's third law. All right, and what other forces do we have acting on this? We're going to have tension acting on the ring, and of course gravity acting on the ring, which I'll write as a big mg. And not only that, but we'll have another bead here with the exact same value for the normal force. All right, so let me clean this up a bit. Let's say this is our ring right here. So drawing a proper free body diagram, we have tension up. We have gravity down, which I'm writing as big MG for the ring. And then we have two normal forces, one like this and one like this, which is the force that the beads put on the ring. Now I'm going to have to calculate the components here for the normal force. And since previously we called this theta, that means this angle here will be theta. And so this y component will be Fn cos theta. All right, so let's analyze all the forces in our vertical or y direction, which equal mass times acceleration in y. And we'll make up our positive direction here. So once we've done that, uh, let's look at all of these. So we have tension, which is positive, minus gravity, which is negative, and then plus two of these normal forces, so 2Fn cos theta. And that's going to all equal zero. The reason for that is because there is no acceleration on the ring at all. And what we also want to do is we want to set tension equal to zero. Why? Because the question says when the tension in the rope is observed to be zero. So let's set tension equal to zero and see when that happens. Okay? At what angle theta will the tension actually go to zero or will it even? All right, so doing that, we're left with um, minus mg plus 2 cos theta times that normal force, which we calculated to be minus small mg times 3 cos theta minus 2. All of that is going to equal 0. All right, so let's rearrange this a bit. We want to solve for a theta for when this actually happens. So I'm going to expand these brackets. So we're left with minus big MG 
and then 2 times 3 is 6, and we have a negative there, so minus 6 mg and cos squared theta. And then we have a double negative here, so plus 4, 2 times 2 is 4, mg cos theta. And all of that is going to equal 0. Now since I'm solving for a theta, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say let x equals cos theta, just to make this a little bit better. And we can also notice that there's a g in every term that we can cancel because we know it's not 0. So that leaves us with, let's start with, um, I'm also going to make it a little bit easier by getting rid of some negatives. So multiply every term by negative 1. So that would be positive, positive, and this will become negative. So let's start with this term here, the cos squared theta term, or the x squared term. We have 6m times x squared. And then we'll look at the cos term, so minus 4m times x, and then finally plus this big M, and that is going to equal 0. So this is a quadratic equation, and we can solve for x if you remember the quadratic formula. x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And so if we do that, we're going to get x equal to minus b so that's going to give us 4m plus or minus the square root of b squared. So that's going to give us 16m squared minus 4 times ac. So 4 times 6, that's going to give us 24 times big M and small m all over 2a, which is 12m. All right, so looking at this, if we want to know if it's even possible um, for this to happen, can the tension in this rope ever actually get to zero? Well, that would mean we need to be able to find some sort of solution for x. To be able to find some sort of solution for x or some sort of real solution for x, this square root must be a positive value. So let's look at that. So we have 16. Just change my color here. So you have 16. This is in the square root. m squared minus 24mm must be greater than or equal to 0. Otherwise, we would not get any real solutions, which means this is not possible. And our answer would be E. All right, so just rearranging this here, we have 16m squared must be greater than or equal to 24mm. Now we can cancel out one of those small m's. And we can also um, divide both sides by 8. And if we do that, we'll get 2m must be greater than or equal to 3m. Or, therefore, the mass of the ring must be less than or equal to 2 thirds the mass of a bead. So yes, this is possible. It can happen. It doesn't ask where it happens, so we don't actually need to solve for theta for where it happens, but we know it can happen if the mass of the ring is two-thirds the mass of the bead, or less than or equal to. But since it wants the maximum value, we'll take two-thirds. And two-thirds of 30 is 20. So our answer is C.